All right, time to remake the Honda Recon carb install video. First thing you want to do is remove this seat, the side panel. And once you get in here, you, you want to remove this air filter box and the snorkel. I don't remove the tank. I'll take these straps off, lift the tank up a little bit to take that uh, retaining pin on the snorkel off. Other than that, that's it. Once you get this stuff removed, you can get in here and work on it pretty easily and uh, get it off. And then I'll show you the reverse process of installing the carb. To remove the panel, you've got these little uh, retainer clips here. Um, it's a two piece. You slide this inner piece out and then the whole thing will come out. Just like so. Your inner piece inserts in there. Once you put that in, it pushes this out to hold it in place. After the side piece is off, you can move on to removing this. Uh, you got a couple of those retaining clips here. You just have to, they make an actual tool for removing these. It's kind of, it's kind of like a little, <laughs> little claw hammer type, crowbar type thing, but a screwdriver and maybe a small set of pliers will work a lot of times. Alright, after you get these two out, you have to disconnect it from the carburetor right here. You can use a nut driver, or this one will take a Phillips screwdriver. See if this will fit. Too big. Once that hose clamp is loose, there's actually two. There's a hose clamp going to the carburetor, then you have a hose clamp that connects to this snorkel right here. You'll want to loosen it as well. You can take the lid off if you want to get a better grip. I pushed down on the snorkel to get it to come out. Now I need to get it off of the car. All right, uh, a little tight, but just pulling back like that, got it off. There is a, a bottom hose with a little spring clamp on it. You can just uh, grab that spring clamp with your fingers and pull off, and then hold the hose and pull up. I'll get a better shot of that. So you can see it, but this is where the, that's where that bottom hose goes on. Uh, it's just a overflow drain hose type thing. That goes to the snorkel and that goes to the carburetor right here. So 
So there's the part of the carburetor. I guess you'd call that the throat. And that connects to the air filter box. Here's the snorkel in. It connects to the air filter box. And then there is this hose right here. And that's the little clamp. You just squeeze it like that. Next, I'll take this off. Uh, I'll remove this strap, this strap. I'll lift this up a little bit, and there's a retaining clip right back in here. And I'll get it out, pull this out of the way, because to get to a nut right in here and this nut right there uh, mainly to get to the one on this side you have to move this out of the way and I go in from the side right through here let's see if we can't remove the snorkel without having to take the entire tank off I got a little wedge here that I'm going to push up under there to help hold that tank up. Just kind of lift it like so. My wedge may be too thick. We'll try it there for now. That retaining clip is just right there. I mean, it is just past this little loop piece or just past the edge of the tank. I've got it lifted up. I've got these long needle nose pliers to try and grab it. And that's it right there. And then this should just lift straight on out and that's where it's located at. All right, the little factory snorkel is on there. All right, a couple of the first things I do when I remove the uh, carburetor is, of course, disconnect the fuel line. And you do want to make sure your fuel is off over here or you'll just have a big mess. I have a standard hose clamp on this one. And I'll just loosen it up and then pull that hose up and out of the way. Also, this hose right here, running from the front, it goes in right up underneath that choke linkage. That is an air hose. It runs up to the front and terminates right up under the handlebars there. Uh, that is just air. It's open on that end. And uh, you want to keep that up and high where it'll be out of water, dust, what have you. And if you're going to put a snorkel on here for deep mud riding, you'd want to route this hose up with your snorkel. All right, fuel line is disconnected. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this little air line so I can get it out of the way. Just set it over to the side here. I'm gonna try and get you a little bit better footage with my phone here of the carb and what all I'm doing. So I've just disconnected the fuel line here connects right there. Uh, I've taken the air hose off 
that's this it connects right in under that uh, choke linkage and um, next I'm going to go after this right there I don't know if you can see it that 10 millimeter nut and there is one other right there that you have to take off once you get those two off uh, you're pretty much in the clear for removing the carb I'm going to try and get in here and get these 10 millimeter nuts off I keep saying they're 10 millimeter I'll make sure yeah they're 10 millimeter all right so I used a box end and I'm putting it on this side it seems to go in pretty quickly and easily like that and once I get it loose I run it off with my finger because there's no room in here and I'm going to try and catch this thing before it falls somewhere and gets wedged to where I can't find it or get it. Alright, it's off, but it's just hang in here, see if I can catch it. There we go. I caught it. So that's the first one. Second one is on the other side. That one I can actually get a couple of fingers on. So there's that one. All right, the card is actually loose from here. Uh, a couple of other things you'll have to disconnect. One is this fuel line. I put a fuel filter, inline fuel filter on mine. So I have to kind of maneuver it out of the way, but once you uh, once you do that, the carb's loose. Now I'll take off the throttle valve or the the throttle and uh, the choke cable. Choke cable's easy. You just have one clamp right here. Loosen it up. Once you get it out, then you can lift this lever here and pull down on the cable. I say it's easy. There we go. your choke right there last thing this right here is just an overflow tube runs out of the bottom of the bowl uh, where your floats sit if it just overflows there's a tall tube in there and the fuel will run down out of that last thing I was working on I've got the choke and this little air hose removed I needed to disconnect the 
throttle. Now, if you're installing a new carburetor, or even if you're rebuilding one, you'll want to change out this throttle valve and needle. Um, this is pretty clean, but uh, if it's a different car, this throttle valve and needle could be different. So you'll want to replace that, and it's, that's pretty easy to replace. All right, there's the carb off. That's the uh, choke linkage and the clamp that holds that choke line. There's where it connects to the body of the uh, head, the intake manifold, I should say. So that's the removing of the carburetor. Now, if you were going to replace this carburetor, which is the original that came on this 2002 Honda Recon with, say, a genuine parts Honda carburetor. That looks like this, which, if you notice, looks about the same as the other one. you would reinstall from there. But if you're gonna rebuild, then you'd take it to have it rebuilt or you'd rebuild it yourself. Uh, rebuilding these is really easy. You can order a parts kit, replace parts, or you can take it apart and just clean your parts real good. Uh, make sure everything uh, is open, nothing's clogged put it back together and it'll work fine. So now it's time to get back to installing the carburetor. Since this is the same carb, I'm just going to go in reverse order. And uh, when installing the throttle valve, you've got this slot right here that has a ramp in it. And you've got a slot over here that goes all the way up to the top. The slot that has the ramp in it, it goes in on this side with your uh, throttle adjustment screw. And you can see it poking out down in that throat. And it will slide all the way in like that. And then you just tighten up this cap. And once that's on, uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll put the choke cable on. I found that putting the choke cable on prior to trying to mount the carburetor really uh, speeds things up. I run that cable up underneath that hose, put that piece in the clamp, but before I clamp it down, I'll lift the lever. I'll put that little thing, that little cable stop in there, and I do use the needle nose pliers, get that cable down in the slot. Because once it's in the slot, it's good to go. Now you can clamp it down. Another thing you can connect back up to while you have it in this position is that air hose. It just slides on. It's got a little clamp on it, a little spring clamp, but I think it's so worn out that it uh, doesn't do much. The main thing is just uh, get your hose on there and make sure it's in a place to where it has fresh air. I'm going to go ahead and pre-route this fuel line which it goes up through here like so. 
Now that I've got that on there, I'll go ahead and line up the the studs into the carb. There we go. Now, putting these 10 millimeters back on, I'll start on that side. It's the easiest, saving the hardest for last. There's usually a lot of dropping involved here, which I hate that it's such a cumbersome spot to get into. And these needle nose pliers come in handy if you do drop it. Grab it and start over. Now, if I had this side panel off right here, I might could get my hand in there a little bit better, but I did not take that panel off. So we'll see if we can't get it started without having to do that. All right, that one is on and screwed down a little bit. Let's get to the other one, which is the harder of the two. I can't even get my fingers up in there. Got it just balancing on the stud right now. Believe it or not, I got it started. All right, I've got them run up. I've got the carb. Pushing the carb into the manifold and then snugging these up with my finger, getting them finger tight. So they're in there. Uh, they're ready to be tightened now. So once you get past this step, you're, you're in the free. I see that I've got a gap back here. Make sure nothing is creating that. I don't feel anything. I probably just did not have the carburetor level. All right. Now I think everything is in its place. What I like to do is I put a couple of eighth turns, if you will, on that, and then I'll do a little bit over here. And then go back to the other side. I don't like torquing things down one side torque on the way and then going to the other side. I want to kind of 
put it on evenly, if you know what I mean. Just about done. This side is as tight as it's going to get. That side's on good and tight as well. All right, I'm going to hook up this fuel line next. I don't like using pliers on that line, but I'm trying to just grip it where uh, it's down past the entrance of the fuel line. Uh, pliers, they can really mess up your uh, fuel, your rubber line. Same dog as last video. He's about a hundred years old. All right, I've got it uh, in position to where it's over the lip. I want to make sure my clamp gets down in a good position as well. That's about as low as that clamp will go. I'm hoping this clamp's not messed up. Um, we'll see here. Uh, still, I need to, I'm gonna turn it to where I can get to it this direction. And a proper nut driver would probably work best. Next thing will be putting the snorkel on. What I've done with the snorkel is I've kind of preset that uh, retaining clamp. I've got it just uh, a little ways in there. I've got the little uh, inside piece pulled out. You're looking at it upside down, by the way. It will go in like that. So I'm going to try and finagle that thing in there and get it in that little hole right there. So what happens is your tank uh, is too low to allow that to go in. So I took the top piece out and I'm just going to try and get it in there like so. What I'll do is take these needle nose Alright, I've got it down in there. Now I'm going to try and put this in there. Tricky thing about this is they go in, um, I know you can't see it on the video, but they've got a couple of 
little notches in there so that they go in only one way uh, actually two ways you can do it 180 degrees but uh, I can't really tell which direction that insert is facing so I'm just going to have to see if I can get it in there this is uh, believe it or not one of the harder things for me uh, I just do not want to take that tank off to do this Well, it just flew. All right, give me a minute. I have to look for that piece. All right, I've lost now two of those little pins that push down in there. And where they're going, I can't retrieve unless I take the tank off. I'm not going to do that. And the reason why is I just took a couple of pins uh, from my other ones. And... Uh, I found that if I, when I put it in there, if I put my finger on top of it, it kind of keeps it from shooting out. And then I just push it down and lock it. So now the snorkel is in, I can take the wedge out, uh, reconnect the straps, and that part's done. Next step will be put, putting in the uh, air filter box. All right, moving on to putting in the air filter box. This air filter box, you've got the three connections. You've got the hose, you've got the snorkel, and then you got the carb connection. And then it mounts right here with these two and the little push pins. Uh, first thing I wanna do is put that hose back on cause that was the last thing I took off and it's on the bottom. So I'm going to grab the clamp and the hose, reach in there, push that hose up on there now, put that clamp back in place to hold it in place. There we go. I just had to look at what I was doing. Now, next thing will be putting it on the, the carb probably. And you want to make sure that you gotta, you're not folding that rubber under when you're doing that. Well, I'm having a hard time. That was not as easy as I remember it being. Maybe y'all will have a better time at it than I will, or I did. Oh, yeah. 
Sweating bullets out here. Ah, it's very humid today. All right, we're gonna put the snorkel back in. Probably same issue, not wanting to fit. I don't know. Make sure I didn't put it in there correctly. There, that one went on easy. All right, then you have to put the pins on right here and since I've already used a couple I'll just grab a couple of these new ones Checking my connections here. All right. Yeah. Put the lid back on. All right. Last thing, two things is the panel and the uh, seat. Forgot where I put the panel. Uh, this panel, it has a bolt connection here, but it's broke. So I don't ever take that off. But yours, you may need. That looks like a 10 millimeter as well. Panels on. Get these tools out of the way. Seats on. And that's pretty much it. I did bring out the keys. I can give it a cold start. Turn the fuel on. I like to give it a couple little pumps. I don't know if that'll work. I'm going to choke it too. Let's see what happens. Choked off, warm enough, things will be doing good. Turn my fuel back on. Alright, I'm going to fire that back up in a minute and run the fuel out of the uh, bowl of the carburetor. Uh, I don't like to let it sit with the fuel sitting in there. Uh, that's it. Thanks.